Hey, hello, hello, hello. Sorry about that, guys. Something wrong with the debugger or my Windows install or something. I still haven't gotten to the bottom of it, but sometimes my system crashes when I'm in Visual Studio Debugger. Don't know why. So I guess I should be careful using the debugger for a while until I figure that out. Okay. I'm bringing my, bring my chat, uh, chat window up so I can hear your guys' chats. This thing on. Okay. So... Where was I? I'm not getting print statements. Cool. Yeah, thanks for sticking around even though I had a total system crash. Oh, that reminds me. Trying to make keep keep a keep a humorous edge to that and not get not get depressed by it. I am having like a total system crashes counter. So now we're at five. Okay. It it has something to do with the debugger, and I don't know what it is. I'm not gonna let it get me down. So where's my output window? Here it is, and we're gonna run Chrome. And this, did I set the breakpoint back up? No, I didn't. Um, here. I'm gonna tempt fate and run it in the debugger a little bit more. It has a subscriber. I wish that you could go to a Lambda function and have it tell you where the code is. I'm going to try to make a guess about where it is in the code. I'm going to guess it's in HTTP network transport. This thing, this diagnost, oh, hold on, where is it? This guy. I'm gonna guess it's there. And, actually, I don't wanna put a breakpoint quite there yet. Continue. Sorry about that. All right, so this close. Oh, I need to set the breakpoint up here again. I think that's where we're getting called. Yeah, see, that's where we're getting called. Why is it not actually sending anything? Is it because this one has no subscribers now? Ah, okay, so the web server has already removed its subscription. I think that's why it's happening. So we can, if we really want to see that message, we should just, instead of waiting, uh, waiting for the destructor to call close, we should be calling close ourselves. Let me just stop debugging. Minimize my use of this debugger until I figure out what the heck's going on with it. And we'll just go to, where would that be in the server? I have a lot of windows open that I don't need anymore. I close them all. Close this. Libraries. HTTP server. So 
It's like the old connections, right? I suppose it will do. We can do it actually before we tell it to be dropped. Yeah, so on connection broken, I think we can just turn around and, and close it. So it would be connection state. Connection arrow cl uh, break false. Let's see what that does. I'm actually gonna run the. Oh, we got a syntax error. Semicolon. Okay. I'm gonna run the unit test to make sure that doesn't actually break anything. It broke something, which is cool. Probably some expectation in, in the tests. Oh, huh. I got an exception thrown. Client should not be released during break delegate call. Okay, well, let's see that happen. Again, tempting fate by running the debugger, but whatever. Hmm. Okay, where? What test was that in? That was in client should not. Okay. Client should not be released during break delegate call. Uh, this one. It's the mon mock connection. Calling delegate is true. What was the point of this test? It should not be released during a break delegate call. Why is it being released? Oh, the server's being destroyed. Hold on, hold on. When's the server destroyed? It should have been sent back to false. It doesn't make sense. Oh, it didn't. It didn't stop at the first exception. That's the problem. Debug. No error. Not error list. It's exception settings. Turn on C plus plus exceptions. Okay. There's the real error, the real culprit. Oh, is it re-entering again? Is it the same problem? I think it is. It's just a problem with our test setup. It's using a non-recursive mutex. Okay, so let's fix that. Recursive, because we can re-enter. Then any condition variables I might have have to be any's. Okay, let's see if that fixed it. Okay, yeah, that was it. So. Nothing broke, or anything broken was fixed, so let's run the web server again. And I'm going to run it outside the debugger. I don't trust that, that debugger right now. Another reason to maybe consider moving to Linux, right? Web server. I should update the plugins. Copy web server, static, yep. And 
finally run it. Okay, it's going to have a ridiculously short timeout, though. Five seconds. Actually, I guess that's not ridiculously short. Okay, so that did the correct braking from... It's actually Chrome is braking first. I guess it's programmed to brake when it gets a 408. Anyway, refresh and then close it. Okay, I expected to see it close the connections. Still not seeing that. Another thing I'm noticing is that it says level 2, not level 0. Where is that broken by peer actually printed? Ah, okay, so we're seeing the server itself report things, but not, but not the underlying connection. So I just don't have those things connected through. Okay, maybe that, okay, maybe I should do that. Where would that be? In the server again? Where it, um... Where is that done? New connection? New connection. Yeah, it's not setting a diagnostic delegate, is it? Let's set one. I don't have a way to set it? Huh. I thought I did have a way to set it. Let's look. Ah, I don't. Oh, because this is the base class, correct? Okay, where would I add it? Because this has something. Where is it? Where is it? Oh, interesting. I already had, I already had this printed out somewhere. Was it this one? Okay, I'm getting a little bit confused. Okay, here's the sender. Ah, okay, we just never wired up. We never subscribed. But that would have been in the web server, I think. Okay, that was where? In here? This guy. Yes, yeah, so we're... We can subscribe, we just never do. I suppose we can just do it here, right? I'll need this guy though. I'll need the delegate. And we can just say depths.transport. Eh? I thought I made a method I could call. Subscribe to diagnostics. How come I can't call that? It has no member. It's right here. I don't get it. 
Oh, is it? Oh, I know why. It's using it through a base class, so we need to do this in two steps. Auto transport equals, and then this equals that, and we can do this up here. All right, and then we just pass the delegate and the minimum level. All right, now let's see if I get those messages through. And too few arguments. Oh, yeah. I should fix that. Okay. Now do I get those messages? Yes. So I actually get indications of connection being closed from both ends. Let me make that wider. So the transport layer says the connection's closed. And it, we're seeing it duplicated because there are three of them. Then the server says, oh, okay, yeah, it's been broken by the peer. And this closed means the server went and told us to close our, its end. So what happens when I let the server close first? Or is it the same thing because Chrome is still closing its connection? Let's see. Sent 408. Okay, no. Um, we are closing our end first. Then the remote end closes its end. And why do we have this again closed by server? Huh. Oh, oh, no. Okay, I'm getting confused. This is the transport layer, layer saying the server told it to close. Then the server says, yeah, we broke the connection. We, we told, we, we're closing our end. It's not really broke, broken by peer, though, is it? Maybe I should, I should be adjusting that. So, where is that? I'll just search for broken by peer. Uh, I have to respond to a text. Sorry, just a second. Actually, I'm just not going to respond to the guy. So, let's see. Dun, 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 dun. Right, so let's close the server. And I was going to look for broken by peer. We only really want to print that if we didn't close our end first. So let's say this is on connection broken. It always prints something. Huh, are we calling close multiple times, maybe? Maybe that's the problem. Broken by peer happens first. Probably because we told it to close. And so it closed its end. And then we call on connection broken. So this break doesn't really do anything if it's already broken, I think. It just calls close. Hold on. You call close with no argument. I forgot to connect that up, didn't I? So what does it default to? Unclean? Hmm. That's a problem. How would I test that? I need to think about how to test that. So make a note. 
think about how to test. This is HTTP server network transport connection adapter. break currently it does not pass along its clean parameter so I need to think about how to test that it's okay now it's just always going to do the default which is a abrupt close which is fine actually in this case Uh, where was that called from here? See, it's already it's already expecting it to be false anyway. Um, but what was I going to make sure that this did right? Yeah, so it shouldn't... If you call close a second time, it won't be joinable, and it'll be an invalid socket, so it'll end up doing nothing. It's just going to be printing these extra messages, which is what I was seeing in the first place right here we should we we shouldn't be printing that actually maybe we're maybe it's because it's printing that last from the service point of view it probably tells this transport to close and then when it's done when that returns then it says, says close let's see if that's what's going what's what if that's what's going on closed by server yeah, so first it tells the transport to break, and then it prints that. It's just this one I don't want to have to see. So it's only close requested. I guess what we can do is we can no it's this broken delegate I kind of I don't need to do that I don't need to do that if we're already closing it ourselves Maybe I'll, I'll, maybe the best would be to have a, a flag in connection state here. So, because we can't ask a connection if we told it to close yet. Let's just make a flag. Closing. This flag indicates whether or not the server is, um, let's say is, is, well, we'll just say closed has closed its end of the connection. Then what we can do is uh, over here on, on this place here, we can set it. And then And then here, we can say if not connection state broken. Ah. Come on, autocomplete. Help me out. Closed. Because if it's all, if we already closed it, we don't we don't need to like close it again and print that confusing message. Actually, I kind of do want to print something. If we haven't closed it, it's broken. But if we have, I want to print closed by peer. And not by peer, uh, connection. Not by the peer. 
how, how does it go? Clo closed connection. And then the peer, it's uh, that what we're trying to say here, and then closed by server. Peer closed. Peer end closed. This is more explicitly saying we ha it was o open and the peer decided to close its end first. This is where it's saying, well, we're the peer end closed there and we're already closing or closed our end. And I think I also want to use that flag here because we don't need to do this break and the insert stuff if connection state closed, if it's not closed already. Although I, I just realized I need to move where we set that flag to there. Oh, hold on. No, we need to we need to set it before that. I know. I'll make it a flag here. Close our end. This flag indicates whether or not the server should close its end of the connection. So only if not close, only if close our end. So yes there, and no here, but yes here. Oh, I'm keyboard challenged again. Oh, is my audio back off again? No? Sorry, I, I didn't see not Zane's message. Hope not Zane's still around. Okay. Test first, right? It's always a good thing to do. Hold on, I gotta take this call. Okay, he's gonna call me back. All right, test passed. And we're gonna run the server. Ah, yeah, let's update. And I'm gonna make a note to do this. Remember to make a script to Update plugins in web servers plugin folder. So I don't have to keep doing that. All right. And close our end. Okay. Close closed by peer. Right. We get from both layers that it's broken. And then we... The, we get the transport layer says it closed. Cool. Okay, that's what I want to see. And then let me then do the timeout thing. So I let this connection stay open and here's the case where a server closes its end. So closed and then the peer responds closing its end, and then we get a closed by server. Cool. That's what I want to see. Because my idea is that these networks transport diagnostic messages are kind of the low level ones, and I might tune those, turn those off. I still want to see the server itself give me this kind of a message if the server closed its end first. But if the client decided to break its end first, we'll see broken by instead. So yeah, I'm happy with this. Let's check that in. 
And market status. All right. I didn't think I changed so much. Let's go to system abstractions and see what I changed. Oh, right. So it's closed connection with, closing connection with, and connection with closed by peer. Okay. So... This is network connection. Actually, it's only the Windows one. I should probably update the Linux one while, while I'm at it. Yeah, so let's minimize that. Oh, hold on. I'll bring up VS Code because it was down. We're going to go to system abstractions, source. Win32 network connections, and I'm going to look for those changes. It was send diagnostic. Okay, and let's find the, the matching spot in the POSIX implementation. It's here, right? Oh, I didn't keep the window open. Duh. Okay. Right, so this goes here. Send diag. So yeah, to close immediately. Yep. A lot of errors here. Okay, and this one I wanted. This is the, the 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 new one we didn't have before. Right there. Okay, so refresh to see if are those changes basically the same. A little bit difference between Windows and POSIX there, and the the this line this line isn't there on the POSIX end because the the way the weighting is done is different. Okay, essentially three areas. So network connection, improve diagnostics. Okay, so use common impl get peer name to format peer address as string. Connection closed, closing. Okay, so we add diagnostic message when the peer closes its end. Cool. I'm happy with that. Okay, next level is HTTP network transport. Okay, that was a fix to a test, basically. Fix client broken test. So there are, there are two parts to that, right? So close the client end first. Verify transport reports diagnostic message about client end closing. Then close the server end last. All right. And then HTTP is next, I guess. Oh, by the way, that reminds me. If you haven't seen it before, my overview page, I have a high-level diagram now that kind of shows you graphically the high-level versus low-level components in what I've been building. So when you see words like system abstractions, you'll know it's very low-level.
like almost the operating system level. But if you see something like web server, you know, that's the very top level program. And then things in the middle, like HTTP and HTTP network transport. HTTP being the core of the web server and the HTTP network transport being the glue that goes between that core and the low level components and the high level component web server. And then things off to the side like WebSockets, they're kind of high level. And then other things like JSON and UTF-8 are very low level. So I hope, hope that helps. So we'll try to keep that diagram up to date. Okay, so this was the changes to the core server. Okay, there were a couple fixes here. Let's list them from the top here. First is, we added that we added that close flag. Where do we use it? We set it when we the server closes their end first. And that's so that we print out a different message. So this is this is fix networking issues in the server. And the first issue was not the, not a fix. Let's let's say fix f fix issues with networking with and improve upon networking. Okay, first issue was print a more a more correct diagnostic message when a connection is broken. Depending on which side closed their end first, right? And then don't don't try uh, don't bother closing a connection that was already closed. That was this end right here. Right. And then use recursive mutex to enable reentrance calls. Reentrant calls. And we're going to have this in another component. I'm, I think so. Because we had to do that in, I think, the web server. Okay, commit that. All right. Diagnostic delegate, yes. Oh, is that all we did in the web server? Right. So connect HTTP network transport diagnostics. And then at the root, what did I change at the root? Oh, we can ignore that. That was just a test. All right. Might be done with debugging, at least on Windows, the network stuff. Hold on, let me go look at my lock. So we fixed that. I think I fixed this. I... This might have been incidental, but I'm not sure. What I was seeing is on Linux, Control C was not exiting the web server. I haven't been able to recreate that on Windows, but I'm hoping it was fixed by this problem where we're not closing our end. I fixed that. That was a combination of things. Not having diagnostics connected and not printing out in all the right places. So I think I'll, I will test this later. Test later on Linux to see if this was fixed incidentally. And I'll just move on to this after I go get a quick break to go refill my tea. So I'll be back in a minute. Just a minute.
All right. Hold on. I am not getting indications from my chat. Hold on. Test. Okay, now I heard that. So, yeah, sorry not saying that. Missed your message again. I don't know why. You're still around getting mad at lack of errors in JavaScript? You want, does that mean you want there to be errors in JavaScript? I, I'm, I'm guessing that your code is not printing out the error messages you want to see. So let's see. Right, I'm going to test this later. We did everything else here. So let's move on to the chat room stuff. So I'm going to do this one first because it's easy. We should penalize a player if they answer incorrectly and no one's answered it correctly yet. So let's close all our windows. Since we're shifting gears, we're going to go to our chat room. Okay. Okay, so it's kind of like first answer scores, we'll say Incorrect answer answers penalized. Incorrect answers before correct answer. Incorrect answers penalized before correct answer. Okay, so Bob, Alice, join the room. Lurker. Okay, we don't need that. We'll have Bob be the one that has the wrong answer. Need to keep the message around, don't I? So we'll have Bob guess wrong. Bob answers the current question incorrectly. Alice answers the correct answers the current question. We'll duplicate this because I'll have Bob try to guess. Bob answers the current the yeah, Bob answers the last question correctly, but a little too late. Answers the current question correctly. Okay, what do we expect to see? A tell from Bob saying 41. Not an award. It will be... Penalty? Or should it make it a negative reward, award? No, let's keep it a separate, a separate one. So it will be, go to, it'll go down to four. Alice will go up to one point and, okay, I want Bob's tell to go through, but with uh, no result. Okay, Bob says 41. Instead of award, it's, Penalty. Uh, penalty e. Um, hmm. What's the what's the noun um, or adjective? Can't remember which one that is. Subject. Let's make it subject. Penalty. Then Alice gives the right answer. Alice gets the award. Let's make awardee into subject everywhere. Actually. Alice will end up with one point and Bob will have four. Just keeping it simple. I'm, my brain's already thinking, well, what if Bob tries again 
and gets it gets it wrong a second time, should it be minus one again or minus two or something worse? Oh, cool. All right. I know which one of my what I know which one of my packages was then. Just got the uh, collector's edition for World of Warcraft Battle for Azeroth. Anyway, no one cares about that stuff but me. I think this test is complete, so let's run, and we will we'll, I will we'll have broken the last one, which is fine. Fix it very quickly. Tests. There we go. Right, so we broke the first answer scores because it's now a subject instead of awardee. Right, awardee is what we actually got and we expected a subject, so let's fix that. Uh, okay, where was that? Web server plugins, chat room plugin. So awardee becomes subject. Okay. So now we just need to implement penalties. Penalty. Okay, so it's all within this, right? If they haven't answered correctly, if the tell is the answer, then they won. Answer correctly true. Give them a point, right? We can just repeat this and say this else still haven't answered it correctly they lose a point it's a penalty what did i call it in the test penalty all right Ooh, I broke some stuff. Tell from non-lurker. What the tell from... What? Oh. Yeah. Well, hmm. That is true. In our test before, we had a bunch of tells with 142, and we didn't expect any re response. So let me think about this. I, I don't want this test to be kind of caught up in, in what happens when there's a contest going on. So what am I going to do? Right now we have it hard coded, I think, so there's always there's always a contest at the start. There's always an answer. I think what I need is some backdoor hook into the chat room for a test to use. Yeah, see, room is there. What if I added a get room? Something like this um is it room right get room Well, hold on. This isn't quite going to work, is it? Because room is declared in this implementation file. Um, hmm. Let's just make the hooks we need here. So one hook would be set, set next answer, int answer. And then it would be room dot answer equals answer room dot answered correctly equals false 
And I'm going to make this extern seed. Or do I need to bother? I don't need to bother. I don't need to bother with that. So this is a back door. Used during testing to set the answer to the next math question. This is well, another typo there. Do that a lot. Okay, this is the answer to the next math question. If I type slower, I think I can avoid a lot of those typos. I'm just typing too quickly. Let's say clear answer returns nothing, but it's going to set answered correctly to true. This is not passed in. This is the backdoor used during testing to clear the answer to the next math question. In other, well, not to clear the answer. about end quiz and end math question how about we just call it what it is set answered correctly this is a vector used to set the flag which indicates that the current math question was answered correctly. Alright, so the way the test will use this is it'll just import them like this and we'll put it here just like we have that extern. So let's say extern this and then extern this. And I have a void. I did have a void there. And I'll say just with a normal comment, these are back doors into the unit under test. Used to use to set up the conditions for the test. Okay. So then what we can do is we can remove the 42 in here. And we can just have it default to there being no question and then in our our little fixture here for setup we can say set answer set next answer 42 but in these places where we don't care about that we will um Oh, hold on. Why why do it in why do it here? Why don't we do it where we actually do those kinds of tests? Here. We'll have have the chat room ask ask the question. It doesn't actually ask. We'll just say post the next the next challenge in the room. There. Okay. Because our tests statically link, at least they should be. Okay, there it's not. Huh. Did I misspell it? Maybe this needs to be externed? I didn't think I would need to do that. No, that's not it. It's not finding it when it links. Okay, I'll give up and I'll just say that. Oh, I probably need this API thing too. Yeah, because the chat room is a DLL. That's fine. Um, it's a back door to anyone who has the code for the for the uh, chat room. 
then the only code that will be is our web server itself. So normally the web server will only use load plugin, but our tests will also use these alternate entry points basically. Okay, so let's try that. It didn't quite work, did it? Okay, I thought I defaulted that to true. Okay, what did I do wrong? Set answer, set next answer. Oh, I know what I think I did. I think we want to make sure. Oh, hold on, hold on. This needs to be true. That's what it is. I think. Okay, yeah, so we're almost there. So what's going on here? Oh, Bob's being penalized with the wrong answer. That shouldn't have happened. Bob got the answer correct. On line 1270. We set the next answer to 42. Okay, what's going on? Both Alice and Bob got the answer wrong, even though they set the answer. Oh, I know what's wrong. That's a string, and that's an integer. This should be a string as well. Alright. Must be some kind of record. That's four packages received today. Okay. That hopefully that fixes my bu my bug. Nope, nope. Okay, what's going on here? The incorrect answer. So. Okay, Bob answers incorrectly, and is penalized. You know, it's hard to see this, but I have an idea about how to make it better. In the JSON, right, we had a, a helper for Google test, I think. We had two encoding, right? But you can have an encoding option. So auto options equals JSON, JSON, in where is it? What is the type name? JSON JSON encoding options. How come I can't use that? Is that private? Oh, it's just one JSON. Okay, it's still um. Oh, it's just encoding options. There we go. So what you can set in there is pretty. So I can do that. That should make the output a little bit easier to read. Let's see. 
Ah, look at that. Actually, it only did it for one of them. Didn't quite do it right, did it? That's strange. That's that's really weird. It did pretty printing for two of them, but not the rest. Oh, I wonder. Hmm. Wonder if it's something about. Let me clean the build and build it, rebuild. I'm wondering if it has something to do with the fact that th that this is compiled into a couple different uh, DLLs, and it didn't rebuild all of them. Because I was expecting the whole thing to be pretty printed. Okay, let's see. No, it's still not right. Hmm. I think I'm going to just debug this later, so let me remove that for now. Because it actually, I think it makes it even harder to read. And I'll make a note, so debug sometime later. Why doesn't setting pretty true for JSON to encoding? Uh, work in the print to function. For now, just look at it all in one line here. I'm just comparing these two here. Where they start to differ is where. Okay, is this addi additional, these additional tells at the end aren't received? Oh, it's probably because they're on cooldown. So. Let's fix that. Both uh, Bob and Alice are going to be on cooldown, so we need to advance the time. How does that timekeeper work again? Yeah, it's this thing. So we'll we'll have there's Bob's post, there's Alice's post, then Bob posts again, but after a second, so his his is cooled down. Alice's tell still isn't going through, though. Oh, did Alice did Alice answer twice? Oh, okay. I don't really get it. Bob says forty-one penalty. Alice is 42. Alice awarded it. Bob sends a tell. Oh, did I have this wrong? Ah, uh, yes. Uh, this should not have been there. Or did I want Bob to... I think I did want Bob. No, it's, it's Bob answers a little too late. It's just this last one from Alice doesn't come through. So it's a problem in the test. And, and this time also. Need to advance time so that Bob's tell doesn't get uh, just ignored because of it's being on cooldown. And we, and Alice doesn't say it twice. Okay, cool. We're good. Doing good on time. Let's check this one in first. So that one in, we'll check in the back door later. We'll check this in. And we'll say, ch chat, well, this is, it's all, this is a chat, I have to say chat room because chat room plugin is part of the web server. Chat room plugin. D uh, default room to not have a, 
question pending. Okay, next. I added the back door. Let's add the back door next. This hunk. Chat room plugin. Add back door to set up math question for testing. And here's where we use the back door, and here's where we an uh, penalize answers that are wrong. Oh, I did make that change too. Um, it's kind of built into that, so we'll say that, that we did both at the same time. Let's say change handling of answers during math question math quiz penalize wrong answers use subject key rather than awardee in award messages and then have have test use back door to set up the quiz in the first place. Okay. Yep. Okay, we're good. So I thought that would be quick, but it wasn't. But anyway. Now we have it, so until the correct answer is given, incorrect answer loses a point. And I still need to do these two. This one's probably the easiest, because we'll just have it generate a random question, post it, just on some kind of random timer. So, let's think about what the test for that would be like. Let's have Bob and Alice join the room. Then we'll advance the time Actually, let's not advance the time. Let's have another back door to trigger no, we don't want a back door. I want to I want to Uh yeah, we'll 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 do what I was about to do. Advance the time so that the next math question will have been posted. And that's with the timekeeper again. This thing right here, server timekeeper, current time. Let me turn off outlining because it's screwing up my uh, undo redo. Okay. We'll, what we'll do is we'll just say it. we have to go 10 seconds forward. We'll just say 11. The way we'll do this is in the fixture where we configure this, the chat room, we'll put in actually, I, we can remove this in a bit. That can actually be another back door, so I don't have to have that in the config. What we do want to have in the config, though, is Configuring the quizzer. So let's call it math quiz. JSON, JSON object. And we'll say min cooldown. I don't know, what do we want for a minimum? cooldown by default. Well, okay, for the test, we'll make the minimum X on the same. We'll make it both 10 seconds, so that we know when we advance to 11 seconds that the question will have been posted. I just need a backdoor to get the current question out. Actually, that, that's, that would be a good test. We should verify that the answer changes every time it posts a new question. 
Is that all we need to configure? I think so. So let's make... Let me just set up the shell for the next test I just thought of. It, it would be... A quiz... A different math question. Different answers. Each math question. I want the answer to be different every time. I think I also want to have a test for... Question matches answer. So we need a backdoor to post the question directly. And then, so we can post the question, verify that the room actually calculates the answer correctly. Okay, so we already have a first answer scores, don't we? Collapse that and collapse this. So this one is... Math question posted when not on cooldown. Okay, advance the time. It'll be, let's say it starts on cooldown so that we have to advance to 11 seconds to be sure it's cooled down. It will have posted it. And we don't need this test. We'll answer it, so. Here we'll um, peek in. Get next answer. Another back door. Here's the back door that I'm sure everyone would like to have. Get the next answer and it just gives it to you. Wouldn't that be nice? Return. The answer to the next math question is return. This vector is testing to get the answer to the next... Yep. Okay, so we just return the room's answer. And then put this declaration up here. Okay. All right. And where was it? So Bob answers the correct question. So we're going to expect two different tells. Bob will have the correct answer. Let's actually cache this. Because we'll expect Bob to say it. And we'll expect the room to ask the question. Actually, we'll need to get the question too. Get next question. So we need the question and the answer. Just to get the next math question. Get next answer, get next question. Question comes before answer though. So let's make the question. This is the current math question. All right. So get next question. And the sender will be mathbot20, mathbot2000. Because why not, right? Bob gives the answer. Bob scores. Yay, Bob. Okay, don't need to do this stuff. That's a little excessive now. So we're testing. Okay, we don't need Alice to join the room. We're testing that if Bob is in the room 
and enough time has passed. And Bob gives an answer, which matches the current answer that will have seen the math bot ask the question. Bob gives the answer. Bob wins. Okay, and then while we're at it, should we make these other ones? Sure, why not? So we don't need anyone to join the room, really. Uh, what we'll do is we'll just loop. I don't know, a hundred times. And we'll remember the last question and last answer. And each time we'll we'll advance. Actually, we need to make careful careful here. Actually, we can just say it equals i times ten plus one. I just don't want to have a race condition. If I decide to put the oh hold on, I am gonna have a race condition actually. When I advance the timekeeper. I really do need to wait. Or the timekeeper is going to have to wake up the uh, chat room's thread. I'll, th I'll, I'll get to that when I get to that. We'll advance the time. We don't need anyone to answer the question really though. I just want to peek in and say const auto question equals get next question const auto answer equals get next answer and then expect not equal to what the question should not be equal to the last question and the last answer should not be equal to the current answer after that though we need to update it and because that runs a hundred times I think I do want it to stop if it fails. Otherwise, we're going to have like a 200 different assertions printed out. Okay, question matches answer. That's a more of a tough one. I guess what I want to do is, I, w I was thinking about this earlier. What kinds of questions should the bot ask? I was thinking it would ask in terms of like x times y plus z. So there would be like three factors in the question. So it's just a matter of who's fastest in calculating a multiplication followed by an add in their head or at the calculator, right? Yeah, so what will I need for that? I think all I'll have is we'll ask the question in terms of get next question components. And that will return void. And it will have integers x, y, and z. x equals room dot question component x, y, and z. Ugh. Actually, why don't I why don't I just make it generic? Then that can actually make it a little bit nicer. I can say vector of ints, and then I can say return room dot question components, and then this needs to include vector. It does not. So, where's the question? Where are you, question? Okay, here you are. So, question components. These are the components of the current math question. Okay. We'll copy that to here. Actually, maybe we can just fold it into this. So, uh, 
I don't need to say this. We can just fold it together and we can say const auto question components. Then we can just say assert equal. What we expect is the string formatting. Question components one, uh, zero, one, and two, right? Actually, before that, I can say assert equal three question components size. And that is the question has to match that. All right, so what should the MathBot 2000 say. What is something times something else plus a third thing? Question mark. Sounds good to me. So our tests are set up and ready to go. But I have errors. What are my errors? They're just warnings. Ooh, it doesn't like me returning a user-defined type. Incompatible with C. Okay, fine. Um, hum, 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 hum. Should I just make that an output parameter? What if I get rid of the C part? These don't really need to be C. They can be C++, and then I just do the same thing here. That ought to be, that ought to be fine. Because the test for the chat room is already pretty strongly coupled to the chat room itself. It's okay if we use mangled names, I think. Yeah, all right, so run the test, please. Yeah, so we are not getting the MathBot 2000 saying anything. There are no components to the question. So let's fix this. Uh, one problem we're going to run into is this advances the time according to the timekeeper, but it doesn't give the chat room's worker thread long enough to, to know that the time has passed. So I'm wondering if we need to design in like a callback. That would be this timekeeper's in interface. Get current time. I think right now it's just polled. Yeah, see there's a polling interval. I guess as I guess as a hack we could just wait the polling interval in our test. So advance the time and then just simply say th this thread sleep for chrono milliseconds. Okay, this is going to take the te make the test take a long time though. If we do 200 milliseconds but we don't we don't do a hundred iterations, maybe we only do three or something like that. I'm choosing 200 because this polling period in the server, which I'll probably reuse in the client, in the chat room, is 50 milliseconds, so I'm picking a margin of 4x. Maybe I don't need to be 4x, maybe uh, 2x is fine. Although it's pretty quick. Might be too quick. There might be a race. I suppose I could cheat again and have a back door. Could I do that? Sure, why not? Let's let's put in a back door. So the back door would be something like 
Await next question. Extern API void await next question. This is a backdoor used during testing to wait for the next math question to be asked. All right, so do we already have a mutex in the room? We do. So we can say, okay, we can't use lock guard, but we can use, if we use unique lock, room dot mutex that should work and then do we have a condition variable yes we do okay worker wake condition let's make another one yeah let's make another one Answer changed condition. This is used to issue notifications when the current math question has changed. So what I'll do is I'll have a counter. Let's see, question counter doesn't really matter what we initialize it to. I just want to see it change. This is updated whenever the current math... Actually, we don't need this. I could just wait until the it's answered correctly, right? Or not answered correctly. So I can say this, a room dot that, dot wait for, no, wait, wait for, Yeah, because we'll, we'll kind of want to time out, otherwise our, if our test fails, it will loop forever. But we don't need to check if it actually worked or not. Wait, using the lock, up to chrono seconds one. This is a backdoor hack anyway, it doesn't really matter. The condition will capture room and return room dot answered not answered correctly okay how come i can't capture room uh, okay how did i fix this before did i just use a pointer hmm i can just do that so Just capture it by value and then use it like that. Okay. That'll work. So So we just need to notify this condition each time we change the question. So where it's set to false. Which means we will want to lock it here too. And here. And put that in front. And this can be a lock guard now. Okay, that should let everything build. It's gonna fail though, because because MathBot two thousand doesn't exist yet. Ooh, we have a bug in an old test. Math question posted when not on cooldown.
Oh, no, sorry. We uh, Both of those tests need mathbot2000 to exist, don't they? Okay, so let's make math dot, mathbot2000. I think we already have a thread, right? A worker thread? I'm going to take advantage of that guy. Right now he waits indefinitely. I think what I'll have him do is wait for... And then we'll do the same thing that the server does. We'll have a polling period. And we'll call this uh, worker polling period. And copy that from the server. Put it up here. Uh, let's put it near the top, actually. This is the number of milliseconds to wait between rounds of polling. The timekeeper and what else does a worker do? We'll, we'll, we'll just make it generic. This is the number of milliseconds to wait between rounds of polling in the worker thread of the chat room. Okay, so it handles users that have closed, but what we'll also do is handle when we need to update the math question. So const auto now equals server get timekeeper get current time. That's now. Now if now minus, uh, let's see, answer. Question time is greater than Actually, we'll, we'll make it say next question time if now is greater than or equal to next question time Then we make a new question so Question components dot resize three question. We'll just keep it short and simple. That is, uh, I need to look up my manual. I forget how to make random numbers. Let's see, rand. Seen zero and rand max, and we need standard lib. Okay, standard lib. Rand It goes from zero to Rand max included. Do I care about even distribution? I guess not, so I'll just do a, a hack which would be mod let's just keep the number small. How about mod 12? And then we'll add one. Oh, add, we'll add two. Actually, then I'll make it mod 13. So it'll be from two to four, no, not 13. Two to 12, right? Because the maximum you'll get is 10 plus two is 12. And we'll make all three of them like that. Well, actually, maybe the, the third one is the plot, what we add. Let's make that 100, or 98, really. So it's 2, 99? 2 to 100, or 2 to 99. I don't want to make it easy. Rand is considered bad practice. MT, well, I'm I'm just doing something quick and dirty. So it's just, it's MathBot 2000, so it doesn't have to be like secure, secure or any of that. So why is it considered bad practice, by the way? Does the manual say? It's in the latest C11 standard. There are no guarantees about the quality of the random sequence produced, but I don't need guarantees about the randomness. 
It's not recommended for serious random number generation needs like cryptography. Well, MathBot 2000 isn't serious. It's all in good fun, right? I think we're I think we're good. I think I think MathBot 2000 is fine. So question will be system abstractions printf and then what is our okay it's this I'm just gonna copy it verbatim mt19937 is that that almost looks like 1337 like leet speak I want to look it up though because I never heard of it oh you know what I also closed my dashboard Oh, now it's open again. Good. Okay. I'm going to look this up, because I've never heard of this before. MTU937. Mercene Twister. Yeah, I've heard of this before. The state of 19,937 bits? Why that number? Huh. Is that in C or just C? Let's see. It's not in C, but I bet it's in the CPP, right? Huh. What does it return? A result type. Okay, what is result type? Result type. Was that R? Is R result type? Result type. So what? I have to give it a bunch of numbers? Oh no, it's there's a predefined one where the type is U int fast thirty two T. Okay. I'm actually convinced that we should use this because it's cool. Let's use it. So it would be random and instead of rand it's standard mt1 there we go and what i can't do a mod uh why not is it uh yeah why can't i oh i have to have an engine okay let's make an engine generator and then it doesn't look that complicated I, I like to learn new things so let's we, we just need to have a generator so we'll, we'll put it near our server so generator right this is used by mathbot2000 to generate the math questions okay the most complicated thing, I think, is the name. But it looks like we can just put it right in there, right? It just works. The only issue is that this kind of crude mod 11, it's not going to give you an even distribution from 0 to 10, right? It, it'll almost be even. It'd be pretty close to even, but because 2 to the 32 is not evenly divisible by 11, you'll have like a small bump up in the probability of zero and, and one or two maybe to come up but that's okay so question components zero one and two and then we'll say that the answer equals that times that plus that answered correctly is false and then we just need to make a new question time. And we'll advance it here. New question time plus equals. And we'll actually use our generator again, because why not? Um, generator mod min next uh, min question cooldown. Well, it's, it's max minus min, right? Um, plus the min. Uniform int distribution, yeah. Is there like a trick to do it correctly? 
Oh, look at that. I'm learning some stuff every day, so we can use this too. Oh, and it uses it uses the generator. Hey, let's do, let's do it correctly. It would be I guess we have to make two of them, right? Or can we just use it in line? It would be standard uniform int distribution 0 to 10. And then it needs a generator. Okay, that's not quite right. It's a class, okay. I mean, it's a template, so oh, do that, right? There we go. That's not too bad. I like that. You can use... Well, I was just thinking about using it... And I don't need to mod it anymore. I was just thinking about using it in line like that. Because it doesn't have state, right? I'm reading, I'm reading. Let me should put it back on screen. Produces random values. Yeah, but what is its state? Can I just make a new one every time I use it? Like, what does the constructor actually do? I, I think it's... I think it's um, okay to just make one and, and and use it and then toss it. I know in the example, they make one and they reuse it. But why, why do I need that? I'm going to have a... Have a potentially three of them here anyway. I'm just thinking about doing this. And then this one is um, 97. And these are two, right? And I don't need the plus two. That, that reads a lot... E well, that is easier to read. I'm not making a throwaway generator because I'm sure that that would end up getting defaults reseeded every time, which it won't be random anymore. So reusing the generator makes sense, but unless this type actually has a lot of complicated construction, which I don't think it would, I don't see the reason why not just, um, not just use it like a decorator. I'm using it like a decorator, like a temporary decorator. I'm trying to get to where that's declared. Um, not, not getting much success. Okay, here it is. Where's the constructor? Here it is. Hey, look, it just, it, it really doesn't do much. All the, all the magic's in its operator parentheses, right? And looking for it. It's probably in this eval, right? Yeah, so... It's this param type will just be... Distribution type and min and max. So it's, yeah. This is extremely cheap to do every call. I think. I'm try I'm, I guess I'm trying to explain a way that not keeping two uniform distributions in my state and just making one every time I need it. Yeah, diving into STL code is pretty scary. I only did that because to confirm that, that this object really has a trivial constructor. Okay, so next question time, it's going to be at least the minimum cooldown. Plus, we should do this, right? between our min and our max. See, I'm liking I'm liking this a lot now. And let's fold this for easy reading. It's this plus this. Okay, obviously we have three variables we have not defined yet. Let's go define them. 
double. Actually, I'm going to need to change the types here, right? Um, it's not an int distribution anymore, is it? I guess I don't need to use int distribution. Is there a float distribution? Uniform real distribution, looks like. Uniform real distribution. Ah, there we go. Real, real distribution. Next question time. This is where I'm going to use my numeric limits. Double lowest to guarantee that one is. Oh, wait a minute. No, I don't want to do that. I want it to be max. And then we'll set it, we'll set it right away when the, oh, sorry about the noise. Let me go close the window. Loud truck outside. Okay. I'm doing this so that the question doesn't get set right away until I've determined what the timekeeper starts at and then we'll we'll start it at that point. So this is the time according to the timekeeper when the next math question should be asked. And we have a couple more constants, right? Uh, min question cooldown. Here I guess we can give reasonable defaults. Although they're gonna, if they're in the configuration, they'll be overridden. I don't know, 30? This is the minimum cooldown time in seconds between to when a question is well, actually we'll say between when two consecutive questions are asked mathbot 2000 will be persistent and if no one answers it'll just ask another question rather than going quiet this is the maximum cooldown time seconds between when two questions okay that's fine Okay, I just need to make sure I parse them and I need to set, let's make this a function actually, because I'm going to use it from two places. Start, stop. Is this, is this start where I want to actually set things up? I think so. It's given the timekeeper from the server. Yes, okay, so we'll do that. So here we'll say uh, set question cooldown. How about, how about we'll say cooldown next question? This method sets the time the next math question will be asked. All right, next question time. Just call it. And then what I'm going to do from start here is right before we start the worker thread, we will say next question time equals server get timekeeper get current time and then and then cool down next question so it won't ask one right away it'll wait you know a cool down period and then ask another question okay this is almost right the only thing is it doesn't actually ask the question so we need to do that here 
it will be like what we do here. We have to formulate a response, unlock our mutex send it, and then lock it again. So we'll do it here. So math bot 2000 post is a tell, a nickname, math bot 2000. That's what it shows up as correct. Tell sent sender. And then the tell is the question. And then let's just call this post. So I can say whoops, whoops, whoops. I can say this is post encoding. There we go. That should be it. Let's see what this does. See if it dies horribly. Hmm. Didn't work at all. Okay, what happened? This never run? Let's see. Oh, wait a minute. Um yeah, we never we never actually get the min cooldown. We have it we have it initialized to a default, but we never set it from configuration. We need to do that. I wanna put it here. Allow math question cooldown period range to be configured. Const auto JSON equals configuration that thing. Is that what I said it here? min cooldown oh it's in math quiz okay okay so const auto math quiz if math quiz dot get type equals It's an object, right? And then we'll do this stuff. Min cooldown. Okay. So min cooldown JSON if min cooldown JSON dot get type floating point. Then room dot that equals this. And then the same thing for the max. Although we gotta be careful that the hold on. One thing at a time. We need to be careful that it's at least the minimum. So we'll say standard m the maximum of the two. Oh, actually, let's let's do it outside. So, room dot max question cooldown. This is maximum of the min and the max. So just so that they're not inverted. That should work, right? Yeah, so if the min starts at greater than the max, it'll just, it'll lock it. Or should I just flip the two? I can say if, what, what happened? If this is greater than this, then standard swap them. 
Maybe that's maybe that's a little bit better. Swap is an algorithm, right? I should probably include that. Okay. That's probably what it was because our test only advances exactly 10 seconds. Okay, that wasn't it. Okay, so what's going on here? Is it ever actually cooling down? Let's see. Run the chat room plugin tests. No. Why not? How about did it ever get here? Okay, it did. Huh. So, when it's... Advancing the time here... Actually, let's just do this test. Okay, this I need to wait for, actually. That's my, that might be one issue. But you know what, let's, um, let's go into that. Actually, I, hmm, 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 hmm. Let's put one there and one there, and then go. Okay, and then in the chat room. It should get to here now. And it will have advanced, so let's see what happens. Okay, it did. Why is it still at 20? Maybe the configuration's not working. Or this isn't getting set right. Cool down, next question isn't being set right. Let's go. Oh, actually, the, the I might be starting it before configuring the cooldown. That might be a problem. Where, where am I calling start? Am I not calling start? I'm calling load. Oh, no, oh, no it should be there. Maybe the configuration is not right. Uh, let me go there. Let's step through that guy. Okay. Min. Wait a minute. How come they're both 10? What did I do wrong here? Eh. Oh, yeah, yeah, they're, 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 yeah, never mind. They are both 10. So what's going on here? How come this is not working? Oh, that's not right. I don't need to add. It's just this. See, I'm just not used to using our new favorite function. All right, let's see if that fixed it. Okay, so it didn't work. <laughs> that does match. What's different? <laughs> I don't get it. 
Oh, I never set the answer? Oh, there's something wrong there. Oh, no, no, that's sorry, that's right. Okay. This I'm confused about because that looks to my eye the same as that. What's the difference? Hmm. <laughs> I don't see this. What's the difference? Okay, um, do I need to code this differently? Pointers, yeah, I'm wondering if I need to say this is false equal. Oh, wait a minute, no, hold on. It's supposed to change and it isn't changing. That's the problem. Um, yeah, that that's actually a problem. So when we make a new question... Let me run that again. Is it always coming up with the same questions? Why well, come it's sometimes it's getting this three times three plus something all the time? Is it just that's the way it's seated? Hmm. I don't know. Oh, but I, I do realize why this first one is timing out, why they're both timing out. RN Jesus sucks. Well, we'll figure it out. Okay. I forgot to notify the waiter when this happens right here, so let's do that. We have to... What's the condition again? Answer changed condition. I forgot to an notify all on the answer changed condition. That's what's causing the test to time out. But the other problem is um, this should repeat until it comes up with a different question, I think. Okay, the MathBot is sending out the question, but Bob is not answering it. And why does it think it should be J? Oh, because what? Oh, I didn't do this right. It should be system abstractions sprintf percent d comma that. Am I getting those as warning messages, but just not looking at the warning messages? Because that's a string, and it'll let me, it's letting me assign an integer to a string without warning me. Okay, there we go. We're just having a problem with these auto-generated questions. I wonder if it's just this, the seed isn't working. Not that, I don't know what I'm saying. I guess it's not being seeded correctly. That's one problem. Because it's coming up with the same question every time. Let's seed it and see. So that's... Maybe we do it and start. Okay, let's seed it. Generator.seed. What's this default seed? That's just a default seed. Okay, I think that's the problem. It's it's not being seeded by anything random. Okay. I guess we just use it to give it an integer. One of my favorite integers is time. Null. Converted into a generator dot uh, value type is that how you do it um what's the type 
What does seed take? Unsigned int. Well, yeah, but... Okay. Well... We'll just make it int. Time is in time.h. So we'll get a new seed every second, basically. And we'll never use the seed more than once. I think what's happening here is it's not changing the question after the first time. But anyway, we have we have a problem where it um, might ask the same question twice. It's a very sm slight chance. So answer equals... So what we'll do is we'll loop. We'll say do. Const auto last answer equals answer. We'll just repeat this until they're not equal. Yeah, we'll do this part. While answer equals last answer. There's one of those rare conditions where you see a do while instead of a while. Because we want to do it at least once. And we just want to keep doing it until we get a different answer. But the problem is still, I think it's not generating a second question. See, it's, um, it's actually pausing for a second there. So it's timing out. Maybe the cooldown calculation is not right. I times... It should have... Yeah, it should have waited. I mean, it should have um, woken up. Oh, hold on. No, it won't. It's got to be I plus one. I think that's maybe the problem. We don't ask a question right away. We wait at least one cooldown period. We've got the same question again. Um, we should print out what iteration we're on. Oh, that wasn't the right place, was it? It's this one. Okay, so it didn't change after the first time. Oh, because we didn't answer it correctly. We need to reset it. So at the end here, we will... What was it? Set. Answered correctly. Because then it's just not waiting again. There we go. And we can actually bump this up now to like a reasonable number just to make sure it would never ask the same question twice. Huh. I didn't expect it to take six seconds to come up with a hundred questions. Means it's taking 670 milliseconds per question? I guess it's because it's, uh... Hmm. Why is that? No, it's a hundred. So divide 6700, so you get 67 milliseconds per question. Right, there's the granularity of the polling period. So maybe that's too many. Um, how long am I willing to wait? Maybe half a second, so ten times? Okay, cool. So there we go. And it's actually it's past three, so this is a good stopping point. Let me check this code in. Hold on, I got a phone call.
Yeah, I need to wrap up the stream, so let me check this code in. Uh, hold on. Check this code in, we'll wrap up and we'll go host someone else. So, I'm actually pretty happy about this. Got through my whole plan. All of this was just implementing MathBot 2000. So, chat room. Implement uh, Math Bot 2000. Okay, this. Okay, add automatic posting of new math questions on a random period. On random periods. At, ra at, at random intervals. Cool. And we'll we'll update the web client to to work with this, and we'll play it next. Uh, we'll play with it next stream, and maybe even have it up on on the internet for everyone else to play with too. Okay. All right. So we'll wrap it up, and we'll host someone else. So yeah, today I almost got my web server live on the internet to let my viewers play with it, but I didn't, didn't quite get it ready in time for the stream. So I focused on fixing some problems with network connections and then filling in the rest of the server side of the chat room. And this chat room is, I'm sort of changing it so it'll be kind of safe. So instead of posting anything you want, you'll be posting answers to math questions that MathBot2000 comes up with at random. And if you get the first, if you get the answer correct first, you score a point. And points are just for bragging rights. We'll we'll play around with it next time. So hope you enjoyed the stream and let's go see if we can host someone else. I need to switch over and take a look. Let's take a look. Okay, Lumpy Touch is going. We haven't hosted him. Oh he's playing Ludum Dare forty two games. Interesting. Yeah, let's go host Lumpy Touch. So, hope you guys enjoyed the stream, and we'll send this over to Lumpy. See you guys later. <laughs>